Former President George W. Bush's memoir, Decisions Points, was released today. And we're going to bring in CBS News national correspondent Jim Axelrod, who has interviewed Bush, his wife Laura, and all those reports will air on CBS Sunday morning. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. Now listen, I got my copy of the book this morning, so I haven't <laughs> read the whole thing. It's, it's pretty hefty, but I know you have. Let me just start right away. What are some of the things that really jump out at you uh, when you're reading this book? Well, I think what, what the book uh, is trying to do more than anything is simply say, here's what I was thinking when he made sort of several critical decisions over the course of the eight years. The book starts with his uh, description of realizing he had a drinking problem. In fact, when we interviewed him, I asked him, hey, were you an alcoholic or did you have a drinking problem? He talks about him having uh, the, the drinking problem that he had. Uh, this was, you know, in, in 1986 when he decided uh, to have his last drink and from there he takes uh, the reader through some critical decision points while he was president. I wasn't surprised so much uh, by anything uh, other than thinking you know what this is his attempt to say as in a, in a very characteristic way this is what I was thinking I'm untroubled by the choices I might do a few things differently but you don't get any do-overs when you're president and you know, critics are going to be, no one's going to, I don't think, change their impression of George Bush. The critics are still going to be, uh, I'm sure, quite upset by the degree to which he appears untroubled uh, by the decisions he made. I asked him very, uh, very clearly, Jan, hey, how do you sleep at night? And he said, just fine. Really? Well, you know, uh, uh, one of the things when you're making these decisions, you know, what regrets would he have? And I, I saw in some of the Supreme Court stuff when he's talking about how he nominated John Roberts and Sam Alito to the Supreme Court, and then he gets into that failed uh, kind of debacle of a nomination for his White House counsel, Harriet Myers. He says basically he regrets nominating her and he wouldn't do it again. Uh, did you get a, any other sense in, in the book? And like I said, I haven't gotten through it, but you know, where he talks about any regrets, that's one of the criticisms yeah. I think people have had of him that he doesn't really seem to have any. Yeah, you know, it's funny. He, he it, when you talk about Iraq, uh, not finding weapons of mass destruction, he still says, I'd go there again because I, I think, George Bush thinks, uh, that Saddam Hussein still posed a threat. Where he was very clear in saying, I really wish I could do it differently, was with Katrina. Not only because of how long it, it took for, for the federal government and the administration to mount an effective response, he feels that there was also a failure in his ability to communicate his, his care and compassion for what was going in New Orleans. Uh, in well, can our I ask you that before we go on with that, though? Did you have the sense that he, uh, I mean, was it that he regretted how he handled Katrina because of the suffering that it caused those people in New Orleans and, and on the coast? Or was it that the political fallout was just so overwhelming? That, that was a real turning point in his presidency, I think. It was, and, and I think he feels that way, too. I, I also think, though, however, he feels a great deal of, um, uh, of feeling this was an area where he was not uh, the decider, which is, I think, was, was critical to his own sort of self-image, was this is a guy who does things decisively when he makes a decision. And he didn't do anything decisively at all when it came to Katrina. And I think he, he still is a bit mystified as to why that was. He says clearly it was a regret, but when you probe a little more deeply about, well, why did it happen, he, I think the White House was in disarray at that point. And I'm not quite sure he's got his arms around still why it happened, just that he feels horrible in, in his uh, sort of clear expression that it happened at all. The other thing that's interesting about that, Jan, is that he says that picture of him flying over uh, New Orleans, uh, he just, he regrets, there's nothing he can do about it, but it was awful, and that he should have just landed in Baton Rouge, talked to the governor, and, and obviously that, that image was something that I don't think he sort of ever recovered from. Does he point any fingers? Does he try to say, you know, I, I did the best I could, but it was the governor's fault, or I wasn't getting any help from the mayor? I mean, does he try to explain it away that way? He does. I, it's funny, the book is remarkable. The tone of the book, there's not a lot of finger pointing. Uh, he doesn't take a lot of shots at, at other people, but with the notable exception of Louisiana's governor uh, at the time, Blanco, and New Orleans Mayor uh, Ray, Ray Nagin, I think he feels that there was a lot of uh, finger pointing and, and nobody making, he couldn't send the troops in without Governor Blanco saying, come on in. He needed an invitation. 
And so he says he wasn't getting direct answers in a timely fashion that would allow him to send troops in. Uh, and, and that that really was sort of a, a, a one of the big reasons that the the response wasn't effective. But he does stop short of saying it was her fault or it was Ray Nagin's fault, uh -huh. and he says it was my fault. Well, what about Iraq? I mean, let's talk about that. I mean, where does he? Uh, you know, you you said a, a few minutes ago that he still would have done it. Um, where does he kind of uh, assess that in terms of what went wrong there, or does he think that it did? Well, I, I think he views things when it comes to Iraq, and, and this is, you know, when I say to you that no one's going to look at the interview or read the book and go, huh, well, there's a different guy I never really knew before. What I mean is he looks at Iraq, and when you press him on points like WMD, for instance, he says, we weren't attacked again. After 9-11, my number one responsibility to the American people was to prevent another attack. And in that regard, we were successful. And so I think everything can be, at the end of the day, for him, explained away by the fact that we weren't attacked again. And that was, so I guess, he saw that as his job. I, I know when he was ex kind of describing his feelings on September 11th, when he uh, sat there in that classroom with the students and waited till they finished the lesson, uh, he, he describes this anger that he's feeling, like, I, I want to go out and kick some ass. I mean, those are his words in the book. Um, does that come through even now when you're talking to him, or did you see that in other places in the book? Yeah, no, I think, you know, he, this is, a, interestingly enough, one of the other areas when he talks about things he would have done differently, uh, and we were able to interview uh, Laura Bush at the time, and I, I asked her, so when were you, like you did with his alcohol, and say, George, you're going down the wrong road, when did you say, George, you're going down the wrong road, while you were in the White House, and she says there were times when his language, dead or alive, or we're going to kick some ass, was a little, a little over the top and a little counterproductive. And he says so, so she was able to sort of rein him in a little bit uh, in terms of the language he used. But you can, you can find different words. I think the feeling was palpable. And, you know, to me, the most interesting part of 9-11, and we get into this in the interview, was he seemed, as a guy who campaigned as wanting to be a uniter and not a divider, that there was this unparalleled opportunity after 9-11 where he really had sort of the American public in his hands, his approval ratings were off the charts. And what happened after that? Why did everything sort of divide, uh, you know, after that? And again, he just feels like he had to make unpopular decisions to, again, ensure the safety of the country and so if he had to make those decisions and take a popularity hit that was part of the job as he saw it and and his fallback position i guess like you said is that we haven't had another attack and he did his job um but when you're talking you said you were interviewed of course also laura um you know so many people have been fascinated by that relationship he says in the book that that's the best decision he ever made in his life was to marry her i noticed also in the passages about the supreme court nominations he credits her for pushing him to nominate a woman that was her advice did you get a sense from talking to them you know in terms of what influence she may have had on other decisions uh, that have, have affected his life you mentioned the drinking yeah well she she uh is the first to say that she didn't want to be another critic and that she perceived sort of her the best way for her to help was to be somebody f to whom he could come home to at the end of the day and sit and do a crossword puzzle and not feel like uh, that he was going to be criticized that said she said she tried to sort of jump in at certain points with things like language for instance or with the supreme court uh, nomination and offer her opinion unvarnished as it as it were but i didn't get a sense that overwhelmingly uh, there was theirs was a relationship like, say, Bill and Hillary Clinton, where policy was discussed down to sort of intricate, uh, the level of intricate detail. Jim, I wasn't sure where you were going with that. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> thinks their relationship was like Bill and Hillary's, or at least it doesn't seem like it. Um, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about this. I can't wait uh, to see your interview on Sunday with George and Laura Bush talking about the book and, and the decisions that George Bush has made. Thanks so much, Jim. Happy to be there. Thanks.